today we will be discussing at first how to use chain rule for finding the derivative of any function how to use chain rule okay suppose we are having we have to find the derivative of just a second yeah tan twice x plus 3 okay this is the function we are having yeah find the derivative find derivative of this function tan 2x plus 3 okay let's see how we will be finding the derivative of this function tan of 2x plus 3 uh, before starting the concept of chain rule let me take few example uh, do you know Fatima what is first principle for finding the derivative what is the first principle the limit concept Oh, I know that. I think we did last year. It was there last year. It was limit h tends to zero, f of like a plus h or c plus h whatever minus f of c over h. This rule we were using for finding the derivative, right? At first, we used this rule for finding the derivative of few function, and then we realized. That mathematicians have used this particular rule for finding the derivative of all the function which we have learned. Like ready-made formula we are having in hand now. The x to the power n derivative will be x to the power n derivative will be yeah and x to minus one yeah and x to the power n minus one. So these are the formula we have got from here. From this principle, uh, first principle, this uh, formula, the limit concept, we have used for finding the derivative. Okay, few derivative we have found, you have found in the previous class, and you realize, oh yeah, this formula is working. But later on, you just uh, memorize all the formula which was already already ready made formula we were having. So the effort and everything already mathematicians has applied and have given us a. A direct formula which we can use directly while finding the derivative, right? Yes. Okay. Suppose we'll be taking just you don't have to use the first principle over here, but a quick quick overview of whatever you have learned over there. So suppose we are having suppose we are having a, one of the function is a sine x. Okay. And if we have to find the derivative of sine x. We already know what will be the derivative. But formula and all, if we'll be using this formula, if we'll be using this formula, it will be limit h tends to zero f of f of c plus h. That means that means yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Okay. Sine of c plus h minus sine c. Over h. Now it looks like the formula sine c minus sine t, right? Right, Fatima. Yes. Where we can use the formula for sine c minus t. If are you able to recall the formula for sine c minus sine t? It was two cos c plus t by two sine c minus t. No worries, this formula uh, I can understand. That time only when you have learned after few days, it seemed like like you are forgetting the formula. Yes or no? Yes. There's so many formulas were there from this trigonometry, so it's completely okay. This is the formula we were having. Okay. However, whatever I have written in terms of C and D, I have written. If we will be using which I am showing it to you over here, we will be having limit h tends to zero. Two. 
cos c lambda cos 2c plus h is it so sin c plus h my right are you getting it How did you get to get the message? Uh, when we will be using this formula. Okay. C plus H was C plus D. C plus D. Okay. Oh, can you see? It's lagging, right? Yes, ma'am. Are you getting it? Yes, ma'am. Similarly, signs. C minus D. C plus H. So, whatever I have written, is it making sense now? Yes. We'll be having limit. H tends to zero to cos two c plus h. By two sine over two. Okay. Now, if we will try using the concept of limit, that is limit h tends to zero sine 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 function by like sine sine x by x is equal to one. Right. Yes. And in the concept of algebra of limit, we have learned that when two terms are there like this, we can write limit h tends to zero the first first function, and then in two limit h tends to zero the second function. Okay. Since both are in multiplication with each other, so algebra of limit concept says that that we can divide it like this. Here also, I want to create a white two v r i in denominator h was there. Just to see the denominator h was there. By mistake, I have written two over. H was there, right, Fatima? Yes, sir. Here h was there. So that h I am writing. So far, no. Okay. Now here we can do arrangement. Sine x by x. If it will be there, then directly we can say the limit will be one. Okay. Sine x by x. So here also h by two I want to create. But since we are doing an arrangement, we have to neutral getting it. x by x we are trying to create limit attached tends to zero so that the result will be one. Are you getting? Yes. But here in denominator two will also. We will put the limit at zero over there because there we cannot do any arrangement. We are not able to do any arrangement, so it will be two c.
plus h is zero by h for yes. Yes, ma'am. So we'll be having two cos and we see the one by two is still here two to one. And we know that the derivative of sine is cos. And here also by using this first principle, we are getting the derivative as cos. Okay. Yes. Similarly, if you will do the derivative of log x, we know it is derivative of log x is one by x. One by x. Okay, perfect. Okay, so by using the first principle also, we will be getting this one. And if if you will be doing the Derivative of this function sine of or maybe you will be doing the derivative of this function log of sine. Is there any formula like this? Mm. No. No. We don't have any formula which will give the derivative of this one directly. But the magical formula that is the first principle will give the derivative. However, we have to work with the limit concept and all so many arrangements we'll be doing. So many formula we'll be applying while using the first principle that is this, this, this rule. But this concept will give us the derivative of this function. Okay, and when we will do so, we will be getting the result as cos x by sin x. By using the first principle. Okay, if you want me to show it, I will be showing it to you. Before that, let me tell you one concept that limit x tends to 0 log of 1 plus x by x this limit is 1 okay this limit is 1 how that uh, is like the proof and everything is uh, like this is beyond our scope by there is a L orbital rule which will give it to us that limit x tends to zero log of one plus x by x it's nothing but just one okay we'll be using we'll be using this concept while finding the while finding the derivative of log of sin so let's do it patiently uh, let me turn off my video it's lagging a lot yes. log of sin x we are having First principle says that limit x tends to 0. F of by h. Okay. This is the formula we are having. Fatima, right? Yes, ma'am. What is C in the formula? C means at this point we are finding the derivative. Okay. Okay. At this point we are finding the derivative of the function. Uh, we can also write it as a x plus h. For now, sine log of sine. X, the derivative will be finding in terms of x only, right? So this is how we can use the formula. X plus h minus f of x. Uh, Fatima, please give me one, two minutes. Okay, let me rejoin. Because yes. it's lagging a lot. Yeah, let me rejoin. Please don't leave. Okay. Okay.
is it like uh, clear now fatima yes ma'am that's nice See this yes. So we will be finding like this f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Point C, if we will be finding the derivative, it will come, the result will be in terms of C. Okay. At point A, we will be finding the derivative. The way we are finding the continuity at the point at the point C, at the point A, we'll be talking about the derivative like that. Okay. So here at X only, X I'm keeping as it is. X plus H minus F of X by X. This is the formula we already limit. X tends to zero. F of X plus H. So it will be log of sine X plus H. Yes or no? Yes, Minus log of sine x over h, right? Yes. Limit x tends to zero. Log m minus log n can be written as log of m by n. Here, anyhow, we want to remove, we want to create this scenario, log 1 plus x by x, log 1 plus x by x, this type of scenario we are trying to create so that directly we can use uh, the limit as a 1, okay? So, what we'll do, limit h tends to 0, log of 1 plus, okay, 1 plus this sign x plus h by sine x. Okay. Since we have added 1, we cannot take it like this. We have to subtract 1 to neutralize it, to maintain the equilibrium, right? Yes. yes. Now we will be having limit h tends to 0 log of 1 plus x. At the place of x, it can be anything. It can be anything and the same term we need in the denominator also. Okay, so let's do this subtraction and after doing the subtraction, we will be saying this is our x over here. Let's do this complete simplification and we will be saying that this is our, this is our x over here. 1 plus something we want to create, no? So this is that something. Okay, we will be saying what will be the LCM, Fatima? Of the in numerator, what are we going to have? Sin x minus sin x. And we will keep it as it is. Okay. We will keep it. 1 plus x we wanted. No, we have created some. But in denominator, we need the same thing. So what? We will multiply and divide and we will create it. So let's create it. Sin x plus h minus minus sin x over sin x. Why we are doing so? Because 1 plus x by x we want to create. Okay. But since a random, very random term we have done, we have written in the de denominator, the same term we need to write in the numerator also. Making sense? Yes. If we will divide it with sin x plus h minus sin x by sin x and one h which was already there in the denominator that h also getting it Fatima yes. this one complete is one okay this one complete is one that one we have to check what is that okay so th that is limit h tends to zero h 
tends to 0. Sine of x plus h minus sine x by h. This one, now only we are doing. Now only this type of something we are doing while finding the derivative of sine x by first principle. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. This one only sin c minus sin d formula after applying, we realize that it is nothing but just cos, cos x, right? Yes. Any confusion so far? No, ma'am. Okay, this is this complete. Just now we did. This is cos x and by sin x we have already done. So the derivative which we wanted to find for log of, uh, it was log of sin x, yeah. For log of sin x, that derivative is cos x by sin x. Yes, that derivative is cos x by sin x. Every time we'll be doing, like we'll be applying this much of effort, no. Now we understood after seeing this one or and apart from this one, like so many different functions mathematicians have taken and they realize that it is following a certain pattern. Which pattern? So the pattern is that whenever we are having this type of function, what we can do, we, the outer function is log. The outer function is log. The inner function is sine. Of this, the particular function, outer function is log, inner function is sine. Okay, at first we will be doing the derivative of outer function. So log x derivative. What is derivative of log x? 1 by x, right? Yes. Similarly, we are going to treat this as a only x. We will be thinking it as only x, but we will be writing 1 by sin x. Log of whatever is there, that's derivative will be 1 by that particular thing. Okay. But since, since we have used the derivative formula for log x, log x, but here we, we are not having x. This is not x. There is a different inner function. So that derivative is still, still we need to do the derivative of the different inner function, whatever we are having, which we have treated it as a x, that derivative still we need to do with multiplication sign. And derivative of sin x is? Cos x. Cos x. Like from here we are getting the derivative as a cos x by sin x. Is it making sense to you, Fatima? Yes, ma'am. Now every time we'll be doing like this. Whenever tan tan 2x plus 3 will be there, we will be saying that it looks like tan x. In, in our formula sequence series, it looks like tan formula we can apply over here for finding the derivative. What is the derivative of tan function, tan x? Uh, six squares, right? Yes. But this is not x. This is not x. We have treated it like x. So this one's derivative is still we need to do the derivative of this 2x plus 3. And derivative of 2x plus 3 is? Uh, 2. Just 2. That 2 will be like in front. So that it will be clear that 2 is not the angle. Angle means it is not sitting with sig square. That's why we will be writing it yes. in front. Getting it? Yes. Let me take the another question. Now we are having sine of x squared plus 5. Okay, 
what will be the derivative of this one fatima s of x square plus 5 is 2x that sign sign x we are going to treat it like the x so sin x derivative is cos cos x square plus 5 yes ma'am and then multiply it with derivative of this part that is 2x with this 2x we will be writing in front so 2x cos x square plus 5 right ma'am Yes. Similarly, if we are having cos sine x, what will be the derivative by chain rule? See, we are using the chain rule over here. We are using the chain rule over here. First, yes. we are instead of x, it, it will be x square. Let's do that also. First, we can see cos of something is there. So, cos x formula we can apply. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Cos x derivative is? No, minus sign. Minus sign. X. Whatever is there that we are treating as x. But that derivative is still we need to find. Still we need to find the derivative of this one. Derivative of sine x square will be. Cos x squared. Cos x squared. What? is x square and we in our formula list there is only x so still we need to do the derivative of this x square yes or no yes that will be x squares derivative will be 2x yes are you getting it Fatima how like a chain we are doing it is only three functions over here but it can be more getting it yes 2x cos x square minus sin x square sin of sin x square. So far. Hold on, where did the 2x come from? Then we did the derivative of this x square. Which we are treating as a x x x, but this is not x, right? X square derivative will be two x, right? And x to the power n minus one. Yes, right. But let's do this one. Now tell me what will be the The derivative of secant is secant tan. X is this only. Okay. Even if it looked weird for the first time, what exactly are we doing? We will be doing it like this: sec x tan x. Because that is how the question is given. Now we will be finding the derivative of this inner function. Yes. What will be the derivative of tan root x? 6 square root x. Will we need to do something over here, Fatima? Yes. Root x, right? Yes. What will be the derivative of that? Um. root x means x to the power 1 by 2 and the formula for x to the power n is n x to the power n minus 1 right yes so what are we going to do 
So one by two minus one is what? Fatima. Minus one by two. Minus one by two. That is one by two x to the power one by two will be in the denominator and it will be one by two root x. So whenever from now onward, you will be having the derivative of root x. That will be one by two root x. Okay? Yes. Directly also you can use and if you are not able to recall, then you can use the form. Okay? Yes. So this is what we are getting. We can write this function at first. We can write this part at first. Okay? Yes. The next question. Let's do this one first. X cube into sine square x to the power 5. Before solving this one, let me tell you if we are having sine square. Let's do it first so that we will have a clarity that how to deal with such a function, how to do the how to apply the chain rule over. So sine square of any sine square theta can can we write this sine square theta as a sine theta's whole square? Can we? Yes. Yes, we can write. Now it looks like which formula from our formula series, which formula can we use over here? Uh, nx and x to the power n minus 1 that is this is what we are going to have right yes okay so 2 sin x but this is this is not x this is sin x so what will be the derivative of sine sine function cos x cos x but here we are having x cube. We are every time we are taking at the place of x, x cube, x cube. So that, that also we need to do the derivative. Right? Yes. X cube derivative will be x square. 3x square, you said? Yes. Yeah. So if you understand this one, then we'll be able to do this one. Okay, here u into v is there. Can you see? So, yes. what is the formula of the product two? U uh, the derivative first function into the second function plus the second function. So at first we will focus on finding the derivative of the first function, right? Yes, ma'am. It is only possible to do the derivative. It is only possible to do the derivative by using chain rule. In this particular exercise you are learning chain rule. But every time in the exam and uh, everywhere it will not be like this that use chain rule to do the derivative. No, whenever you have to do the derivative and if the formula is not, not matching, you have to think about maybe chain rule can be applicable, maybe product rule can be applicable, maybe quotient rule, the division rule can be applicable for finding the derivative. So just yes. the question will be find the derivative. Or in while doing the like calculus portion, while doing any other problem, we'll be having that, we'll be having a scenario where quick, 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 we have to find the derivative. And that time, if something is not looking like the formula, we will be thinking about the other possibility. So maybe we will be thinking about UV method, maybe we will be thinking about the quotient rule, maybe we'll be thinking about the chain. Okay? Yes. So here also we have to find the derivative u u into v type of structure we found that means u v method we can use over here. anyhow just anyhow find the derivative that is the main thing 
and we are learning so many possible ways of finding the derivative that any way we will be finding the derivative every time exactly formula will not match that particular part you have already covered in class 11 so here why we are doing this derivative and all again we are just updated version of derivative we are learning that what if what if this type of function will come then how we will be finding the derivative what if that function will come then how we will be finding the derivative these are the scenario we are learning over okay yes so uv method first we will be focusing on finding the derivative of this one what will be derivative of this one fatima uh, minus sin x into 3x squared perfect okay perfect now b will be as it is then plus plus u will be as it is right yes b we have to focus on and we know how to focus on b what will be the derivative of b Uh, two, nine, x raised to 5 into cos x raised to 5 into 5 x raised to 4. Perfect. You got it. I can see it. Right? Yes, ma'am. So you understood. Uh, if we'll be having sine ax plus b by cos ax plus b, you will be able to apply the division rule. Right, Fatima? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, b and then derivative of u minus u derivative of b by v is that you will be, whenever we have to find the derivative of this one, we know how to do the derivative. For that, even if we have to use the chain rule, we are comfortable with that. Okay. So, if you understand this much, then the remaining question I am leaving for you. Uh, one question I, I want to take over here so that clear, a crystal clear idea will be, you will be having about the chain rule. Just a second. A, a huge function I am going to write over here. Please don't get scared. Okay, this is from JW. I am just taking this question so that you will be having an exposure that chain rule we can apply anywhere. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Let's do it. We have to find dy by dx over here. So, as I said, it will not say, the question will not say that use chain rule. The question is just find the derivative. Whatever way it is possible, find it. So, so many ways we, we know till now. We will be thinking about which way it, it's possible and we can understand by using the chain rule it is possible. Sine cube of anything is just same as sine x, sine theta's whole cube. Right, Fatima? Yes, ma'am. So we can write over here what can be written over here. Tell me. 3 sine square Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and then whatever is there, whatever is there, carefully we will copy paste. We will copy paste as it is, right? Okay. 
looks like it looked like x to the power n we have used the formula n x to the power n minus 1 but this is sine function so sine function derivative will be cos function right yes cos with whatever is there cos with whatever is there Because when we are having when we are having y is equals to sine two two x plus three, we have done like this three sine is square two x plus three, and then we have done sine sine function that is cos two x plus three right Fatima and then we thought about the inner function yes or no? yes okay so let's write it. Now we will be thinking about the inner function, right? Yes. So doing everything in one go, if it, it will make you confused, then you can write over here. Now we will be focusing on derivative of this one. 5 by 3 cos 5 by 3 root 2 okay, minus 4x cube plus 5x squared plus 1 Power three by two. Now we will be focusing on finding the derivative of this part, right? Yes, ma'am. Now all the green part, all the green color part will be as it is, as it is, and the black color part we will be finding the derivative. So it will be pi by three. Okay, pi by three is just a constant. What will be the derivative of cos of any angle? Cos theta. Cos theta derivative is. Minus sine theta. Minus sine and theta is over here. It's pi by 3 root 2 and then minus 4x cube, then plus 5x square, then plus 1 to the power 3 by 2, bracket close. Okay. Now this inner function still we have to do the derivative of this inner function. Right, Fatima? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this part pi by 3 and 4x cube and more. So if, if you want to do it directly, if you understand it, then we can do it directly. That this inner function is still we need to do the derivative where pi by 3 root 2 is what? Just a constant. Yes. Then something to the power 3 by 2 is there. Can you say it, Fatima? Something to the power 3 by 2 is there. So still x to the power n formula we need to use over here. Right? Yes. Okay, so we will be using the formula 3 by 2 minus 4 uh, and x to the power 3. x to the power 3 by 2 will be here. Then n x to the power n minus 1. Please do it quickly and tell me what are we going to do. Yes, Fatima, 3 minus 2, that is 1 by 2. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, here the power will be 1 by 2 or square root we can also write, right? Yes. Now still we need to do the derivative of this minus 4x cube plus 5x square plus 1. Yes or no? Yes. What will be the derivative of this, this part which we have treated as a x? What will be the derivative of that? Twelve x. 
This part is done. In first trigonometric function, uh, the question which we were solving, just a second, let me take one more question, which was from that section. Since together we have uh, done that particular chapter. Just a second. It was something like this. Now I'm not getting the exact question, but it was something like this. Y is equals to sine is square two x plus three tan inverse one minus six over one plus six. It was like this. So there are two ways to do the to find the derivative of this. The first way is u into v rule. Okay, and then just just start finding the derivative. Tan inverse derivative will be one. Uh, what is the formula for finding uh, for tan inverse x derivative? Mm. One by one plus x square. Isn't so, Fatima? So that is one of the that is one of the way, and the other way is we can use the concept of inverse trigonometric function. This one we know the we know how to do the simplification. Tan inverse one minus x by one plus x in inverse trigonometric function we are discussing. Let's take such a x which can help us doing the simplification, which can help us making tan function. Over here, so that tan inverse and tan will neutralize each other, right, Fatima? Yes, ma'am. And we realize x can be taken as a cos theta, right? Yes, ma'am. It will be one minus cos theta or one plus cos theta. And if I will, if the steps and all we have already discussed, so something like this will come: tan of theta by two. Here in the numerator, it will come sine theta by two. And in the denominator, it will come cos theta by two. Are you getting from where are we going to get that? Yes. Okay. So here we'll be getting theta by two. Theta means theta means theta means cos inverse x, right? Yes. Right. So cos inverse x by two. So we can use this over here. That's why I said that time when inverse trigonometric function we were discussing. I said to you that here we are learning how to do the simplification, and in calculus we will be using it, okay, to make our question simple. So here instead of this much of bigger function, which you can understand, tan inverse will be doing the derivative. Then after that, one minus x and one plus x we have to do the derivative by u rule. 
like u by b rule yes or no yes ma'am instead of this tan inverse 1 minus x by 1 plus x if we can say that this one simplified version is cos inverse x by 2 this one simplified 